Hello, science, Mr. Robertson, back in action. And this time it's a video on plants and a video on how plants can get their energy, baby. Because we've spoke about producers and consumers. And consumers eat, like me. And they eat and they get their energy. Yum, 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 yum. That's great. But the plants don't do that. The plants have to produce their own energy. So, there's three things that you already know, and if you don't know, I'm going to do that, about how plants get their energy. Plants need to have carbon dioxide, and that's the one they always forget. With the easy ones, water and sunlight. Different parts of the plant catch all of these three things. Carbon dioxide comes in through super tiny holes under the leaf. They're not on top, because they're in top, they would get filled with water. They are underneath the leaf, like so. And they are called stone mass. So if I draw my leaf here, here's my leaf. It's a leaf. I'm sorry. I'll do a better one. Leaf, it's small here, and then that's better. I would have underneath here little holes called the stone. The water gets sucked, is sucked up from the bottom. And of course, we need the roots, retina, to help with that. They have to take them all the way up. So if I've got my plant here, plant, there's a leaf, there's another leaf, there's a flower thing. The roots are underneath and they have the job to suck up the water. They also have another job, which is for balance as well. The plants need to be really tall. So the roots help they balance so they don't fall down. The reason it be tall is that the sunlight is caught by the leaf and we need to get that plant high to catch the sunlight if it's not high if it's got no balance and it falls over it'll get less light and be less strong so we need the sunlight to catch and there's a chemical called chlorophyll which does that job. That chemical can catch sunlight. This is why plant leaves are green, because chlorophyll is a green material. As those leaves start to die in autumn, the leaves can change to a red or a brown color because the chlorophyll is being taken away. Those three things have to come together. With those three things, there is a chemical reaction that happens in the leaf. And we need, I can write it in chemicals I'm sure, I have the CO2, the water, and the light. Remember light is not a thing, it's not an atom or anything, so I write light separately over the arrow. And that comes to two different things. One here is really complex. C6H12O6. You don't need to know that. You need to know that is called glucose. And a gas, you do need to know, which is called oxygen. Oxygen happens because of all of this reaction. The plants don't give me the oxygen because they want to. They don't care about me. It just happens here because... Because... This here is what is important because glucose is a simple sweet sugar. And if the plant is making for itself tasty sugar, it's gonna get lots and lots of good energy. So the glucose is the energy store. The glucose is the reason why the plant does this. And what this is, is called 
forward. So, synthesis. I should make that a spelling word, I think. Photosynthesis. That is what we have there. This is how plants make energy. But plants do need more things than just carbon dioxide, sunlight and water. Although those three are, of course, the most important. For example, to get everything else, plants need to have lots and lots of nutrients. Nearing. And a soil, yord, that has lots and lots of these three things is best for almost every plant. It needs to have nitrogen in the soil. It needs to have phosphorus and one more. It actually needs to have as well calcium in the soil. No, not calcium. I'm really bad. I'm sorry. I read the book here. And in the book, can you see? The thin square, nitrogen, or kalium, phosphor, that, or kalium, core. I saw the core and I went to calcium. And I've done exactly one of the biggest mistakes in science. Because remember, all the different things that are there on Earth have the same letters in different languages. Calcium, its symbol is CA. However, you have something called kalium, which has the symbol K, but is the element we call in English potassium. Potassium, nitrogen, which is N, which is further, that is different in Swedish, and phosphorus, and a phosphor, have I spelled correctly? I'm going to check. I haven't. It's not phosphor, phosphor. And that is a P. That's the P, of course, same as the English phosphorus. All of these symbols are different in different... No, no, stop. All these symbols are the same, but the names of every element can be different. That is why we use these here. That is why I have remember that K is potassium, and I just panicked in my video. Sorry about that. Those things are also needed. Now, we can put this on with chemicals. We can put chemicals on to do this. However, if we put chemicals onto the soil, usually those chemicals are called fertilizers. That can be okay, but they're usually expensive. They could be damaging to the environment. So we need to be very careful about doing this. One way that we can do this, a different way, is to use or the more scientific word is going to be nah sorry you had said and if we use that hey let's face it these animals get rid of lots of these nutrients so we can put what comes out of their bum and put it on the soil and that actually helps things to grow as well. That has lots of nutrients. And you might think that's disgusting, but that's actually how we've done it since we started growing food. Um, if you buy food which is organic, ecologist, it's pretty much certain that you would need to use some poo to help those plants to grow. And that is perfectly okay. You can make beautiful, tasty things by recycling our food chain. Because bacteria will break down that poo into the simple elements that our plants need and then the cycle starts again and again. We need to do more of that.
in the future. I success. Ciao for now.